Why? Why is money such a defining thing for us? Why is it, you know, why have I allowed it um, to, to cause all kinds of behaviors in me, fear and, and irresponsibility and, you know, I mean, I, my track record with money in my adult life has not been great. Um, thank God for his help and mercy. Um, and so I've been thinking about, okay, so what's the deal with money as a follower of Jesus? And, and these are some things that have come to me. I think that the reason God entrusts us with resources like money and finances and all that, one of those reasons is it is an opportunity to be a generous person. Why? Grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of Jesus' countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into Jesus' likeness. So we prayed at the beginning of church that we would be changed into the likeness of Jesus. So part of this whole generosity thing is to be like God, to be like Jesus. God is generous. Like that is one of the defining characteristics of God is that everything that God has seems to go out from God. God's not holding anything like this. You know, it's one of the, the attributes of God is that God is a, a generous God. It's why we have that real familiar line that uh, Ilsa read for us out of 2 Corinthians. God loves a cheerful giver. Why? Why does God love a cheerful giver? Because that means someone's behaving like God, which is a way of saying behaving the way we were created to behave. We were created to live generously, to live with an open hand. And I think that our relationship with money, it reveals three things about us and three things about where we are at in our relationship with God. It, our relationship with our resources reveals how grateful we are for the things we have, right? How tightly we do or do not hold on to our money and our stuff reveals to about us how grateful we are for it. I have come to realize that the more I practice gratitude for the resources God gives me, the less I feel the need to hold on to them. Because the next thing that reveals about us is how much we trust God. Right? How I relate to money and, and resources reveals how much I trust God to continue to provide that for me. So if you say, oh, I have faith, do you trust God? That's the evidence of faith. It's kind of like when Jude, my son, who towers over me now, was a toddler standing on the edge of the pool. You know what the evidence that he trusted me to jump into the pool was? He jumped. He could stand and be like, I trust you, Dad. I trust you, Dad. I trust you, Dad. Then jump. Nope. Well, you don't really trust Dad. How we relate to money and resources and all of that, it, it reveals if we're grateful for it, and it reveals how much we trust God, I believe. I think it's a real act of faith and trust, though, to dig deep and trust God with your resources. You know, it's funny because I think a lot of times we look at those people who are really, really generous in our minds, and we equate generosity with zeros behind a number. That's the wrong formula. But when I have had the privilege of knowing the people who are really generous, it's typically not the people who are giving from their abundance. It's actually folks that are digging really deep to do what they're doing. And what that tells me is they trust God because they're digging deep. 
So how we relate to resources and money reveals our gratitude for the things God provides for us. It reveals our trust in God to continue to provide. And then the last thing where I am about to get up in everybody's business is I think how we relate to money reveals how selfish we are or selfless. I've been super guilty of that. And if the point of living a generous life is to be like Jesus, I can't think of anything about Jesus that was selfish. I just can't. You cannot be selfish and give up a perfect existence with your Father in heaven and the Holy Spirit, whom you've known since eternity, to limit yourself by becoming human. That is selfless. And as I say around Christmas time, he didn't become human to be the strongest king on earth which still would have been selfless, by the way, for Jesus. He humbled himself to become a baby and born into a human family and know what it was like to be hungry and all these things. And then to pay a debt that wasn't his on the cross, which is what we are about to turn and walk towards for the next 40 days of Lent. Relating to money can be really hard, especially when there's more month at the end of the money. And, and I'm not trying to say, oh, just trust Jesus and everything will be great. I'm not saying that. I am saying that how we relate to money helps us exercise the ability to become more like Christ. To be grateful, to trust God, and to examine how selfless or selfish we might be at any given time. God loves every single one of you incredibly. And so when you bring a need to God, God is listening. I believe that with all my heart. And I just want to encourage you to stay the course. Practice gratitude for the things that God has given you. Maybe you've forgotten what they are or been distracted from what they are by what's going on. Just make a list. Get out a napkin or a piece of paper and write down five things God has provided that you're grateful for. Trust God. Sometimes it's challenging because of your circumstances. I personally have found God to be trustworthy over the last 31 years of my life of walking with Jesus. And examine yourself in relation to money and things. Where on the spectrum of selfless to selfish do you feel like you're landing? And if you need to do some business with God about that, do that business with God.